This single ship can carry enough oil to fuel an entire city for months. But how do you even build something this massive? Today, we're going inside the world's most advanced shipyards to see how these floating giants come to life and why the countries that build them might surprise you. This is big industry, and these are the countries that control super tanker shipyards. Picture this. You need to build a ship longer than the Empire State Building is tall and strong enough to carry 300,000 tons of oil. The solution? Something called block construction. Instead of building bow to stern, shipyards construct massive 800-ton sections simultaneously, like building with Lego pieces the size of apartment buildings. These blocks are moved by cranes that can lift 20,000 tons and positioned with millimeter precision in giant dry docks. Here's what blew my mind. The hull is only 20 to 30 millimeters thick, like wrapping a basketball in aluminum foil. The strength comes from internal frameworks that distribute forces across the entire vessel. Now here's where things get interesting from a global perspective. When you look at where these ships are actually built, three countries dominate the market. China, South Korea, and Japan control about 90% of the world's shipbuilding capacity. China now builds nearly 50% of the world's ships by tonnage, having rapidly expanded from just 6% in 2001. Companies like China State Shipbuilding Corporation operate massive state-backed shipyards. South Korea holds about 17 to 27% of the market, with companies like Hyundai Heavy Industries and Samsung Heavy Industries operating some of the world's most advanced shipyards. Japan rounds out the big three with about 10% market share. But here's the problem. This concentration of shipbuilding capacity in East Asia creates some serious vulnerabilities. Let's talk about the United States for a moment. America, the world's largest economy, has virtually no capacity to build large commercial ships. The US has only a handful of shipyards capable of building major vessels. And most of those focus on military ships. This matters more than you might think. During World War II, American shipyards built over 2,700 Liberty ships in just four years. Today, the US couldn't build even a dozen large commercial vessels annually if it needed to. Why did this happen? Economics, mainly. Asian shipyards benefit from lower labor costs, government subsidies, and economies of scale. It became cheaper for American companies to order ships from overseas than to build them domestically. But this creates strategic vulnerabilities. What happens if tensions rise in the South China Sea? What if trade relationships sour? Suddenly the world's shipping depends on regions that might become politically unstable. Europe faces similar challenges. While countries like Germany and Norway still build specialized ships, they've largely exited the bulk shipbuilding market. The result? A handful of countries control the infrastructure that moves 90% of global trade. That's a lot of economic power concentrated in very few hands. Here's a wild fact. A single super tanker contains enough steel to build 20,000 cars and uses remarkably efficient transportation. Ocean shipping can move cargo 10 times more efficiently than road transport and 17 times more efficiently than air transport per ton. The engineering is incredible, but the concentration of shipbuilding in just a few countries raises serious questions about global trade resilience. Should more countries rebuild their shipbuilding capabilities? What do you think? Drop your thoughts below and hit subscribe for more deep dives into how the world's most complex machines are built.